when you're looking uh, at a utility player, whether you have whether you're, you're going to be able to take one or two, how important is the sheer number of positions that that player can take, and is there and is there something that they absolutely must do? Let's say they must be able to play shortstop. Well, you definitely would like them to play shortstop. So for me, a true utility player is able, able to play short, able to spell your shortstop, able to spell your second baseman, third baseman, possibly a corner outfield in, if need be. The more guys you have like that, the better. And today's day with uh, you know, the grind of a six-month season, and the ability to have to give, you know, try to give guys days off. Uh, you know, you'd like to have as many guys that you can that can play multiple spots. And uh, so shortstop is, is if you, you definitely need a backup shortstop. And if it's your true utility guy, that's a, that's a bonus. Next up is Melanie Newman. I'm kind of piggybacking off of that, but on the other end of things, this whole 13 versus 14 pitchers battle, when you look at making that ultimate numbers decision, um, does it come down to circumstance of the team or performance of the pitchers themselves, or is it another outside factor? There's a lot of factors, whether we're taking 13 or 14 pitchers, how we feel about our rotation and the length that those guys are going to give us. If we want to carry an extra bullpen arm, if we feel like we need an extra long guy, uh, that's why we're trying to stretch out as many pitchers as we can. Kind of a difficult situation without minor league games. We have a lot of, you guys aren't here, but there's a lot of sim games, a lot of backfield stuff going on to try to create uh, as much flexibility we have with our pitching staff just because of uh, the COVID this year, as well as a uh, shortened year last year, not, not knowing how many innings guys can go this year. I think we're just preparing for for everything. And uh, so whether we're carrying 13 or 14 at this point, just don't know. Next is Dan Connolly. Hey, Brandon, <clears throat> the, uh, I think for the last few years, even before you, the Orioles could, would sell opportunity. You know, this is a place you could come and if you played well, you know, whether spring or minors, whatever, you can get a chance. Um, but it seems like it, you know, the numbers are starting to catch up to you a little bit, uh, like in the outfield in particular, where it seems like there's a bit of a numbers crunch. You know, we talked to Ryan McKenna. He said he's going to handle, you know, he's going to do things, you know, basically, you know, he's going to control what he can control and that kind of stuff. But how hard of it is a challenge for you as a manager to kind of preach that to some of the guys who are on that bubble or maybe below the bubble that there still is an opportunity, even though if the numbers right now don't look like there is? Oh, just because anything can happen. And there's, there's definitely opportunity here. I think as you get guys to the big leagues and, and get better as a, as a team and, and more depth in your organization, Sometimes op there's less opportunities uh, just because we have more everyday players and potentially less, uh, less open spots. I think when you get good, you have, you have a lot less open spots going into, into the season uh, on paper. Uh, but here we, we're still in the, in the mode right now where we, we have a lot of opportunity, um, especially on the position player side from the standpoint of, uh, you know, we have, we don't have a ton of experience and, and like I said before, like in th this year, anything can happen from the COVID protocols and um, you know injury standpoint. So there's there's definitely opportunity in this camp. Next is Joe Trezza. Hey Brandon, when when you were with the Cubs, you had a, a group of position players that more or less came up together. They won in the minor leagues or had su had success in the minor leagues, and then came up together and won in the big leagues. And now it's, it's not exactly the same, but you have a group of young pitchers that performed really well together, especially at double A a few years ago, um, and who all could be kind of knocking on the door now. In general, do you think there's a tangible benefit to guys who win together down in the minor leagues and then come up together? I think it's helpful. I think guys pushing each other throughout the, through the minor leagues, competing together, competing against each other, and winning, I think, is an uh, important part of development. And it's not the end all from what kind of player this guy's going to turn into be or, or what he's going to be like when he gets to the big leagues. But I think it's very, very helpful from an organization standpoint, as well as, uh, you know, playing meaningful games in the minor leagues. Can, uh, I think there's definite benefit to that 
uh, as part of your, the development in the minor leagues. Um, so, but guys that have played together, I think that have that have done that uh, and competed against each other as well as other clubs. I think that there's uh, there's an there's an advantage there. Next is John Mioli. Brandon, you mentioned all the stuff happened on the backfield. Is Zach Lauther one of those guys who's getting stretched out on the backfield, or is there something keeping him out of games? Is that who? Zach Lauther. Lauther? Yeah, Lauther's been on the backfield. He's scheduled to pitch this weekend. Next to Steve Molesky. Brandon, if it turns out to be Galvis and Sanchez up the middle, how good can they be together? What, what does it look like when you've seen them together this spring? And what could it mean for the pitchers and the whole team, really? They've been, they've been really fun to watch. They're, they're working together a lot, getting to know each other. Uh, it looks like it's an easy transition for both of them, um, playing with somebody different uh, in the middle. And they've, they've taken to it very, very well. They've, they're around each other all the time. Um, the, the times that they have played together, I'm going to play them together a lot more here in the last, the last couple of weeks. Just I do think that that chemistry is important. And I think it's been very, very smooth up until this point. So I'm really happy with how both those guys are playing defensively. The work that they do is they're, they're, they are true pros. These guys are professionals. They've been around pros. They've been doing this for a long time. Um, they've been around good players and they know what it takes. And uh, I'm very, very pleased and happy with how they, everything, everything they've done so far in camp. Next is Dan Charles. Brandon, uh, a question about, uh, I think a lot of us were wondering what a missed season for young players would, would mean to them. Have you been able to touch or feel anything that some of your younger guys that you're getting used to seeing that they missed by not playing at all last year? Well, not only the at-bats and the innings, but just playing the game, the instincts that come a part of, uh, learning how to play the game of baseball and understand base running, defensive situations. I think that's a huge loss for guys that weren't able to compete and play in, play in games last year. You can, you can simulate things all you want. You can have pitchers, uh, you know, throw sim games. You can have hitters take at bats uh, and you can improve. And, and I thought our guys did a great job of that last year, but, but the part of the game, of that's the other part, which is base running, defense, game situations, fundamentals, the, uh, you know, how you win and lose games that was lost on, on every minor league player last year. So that's going to be important as a catch up this year, for sure. Last question is Rich Dubroff. Hey, uh, Brandon, uh, you, you've had, besides Severino and Cisco, again, you have uh, Austin wins. Uh, do you look upon Austin as really good insurance, somebody who's played in the major leagues and knows a lot of, uh, you know, and knows a lot of these pitchers in the, in the system well? I'm very comfortable with Austin. I think Austin does a great job uh, when it comes to the pitcher-catcher relationship. Pitchers really like to throw to him. Uh, he, manages the, he manages the game behind the plate very, very well. And I've been impressed with his at-bats. You know, he gives you a good at-bat – a couple of years ago when he was with us uh, part-time, I thought the bats he took were competitive. It's not easy to do, to have sporadic playing time and to go back behind the plate and not, you know, not having a bat for a few days and go out and take a good at bat. And Austin did that. And I have confidence that he would be able to do that again. 